The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. We're going to take a look here uh, at this German DAX, the 60-minute chart. But before we do that, I'd like to go over a couple of things. Uh, first of all, I will be doing the uh, show for Basil Chapman from 12 to 1, uh, both today and tomorrow. Uh, today's show, I'm going to focus, since I don't get the Basil's uh, group very often. I'm just going to show the longer term things that I've seen in the stock market, you know, especially that big bottom that we had there on December the 31st. What are the possibilities of where we are and where we might going? And then on Tuesday's show, I'm going to go into some of the things about the Bradley model and show some really important empirical data that says, uh, yeah, there's something in the astrology. This old cowboy ain't found it, but uh, when it all lines up, it does look pretty good. I'm going to show share some of those things going back to 1974 uh, during the time, uh, you know, when I was really heavily into trading. Well, I'm <laughs> that's a misnomer, but uh, things were different then because, you know, we didn't have all these computers and stuff, but... Uh, I want to cover some of that because I think we're getting closer to seeing something on one of these major channels to say that, say that yes, there are something uh, in these cycles, but uh, like everything else, you know, it's just not uh, perfect. Uh, the second thing I wanted to mention is there's something really big going on in the world, folks, on the Asian side of the, of the, of the realm, and that is uh, in Hong Kong, uh, 200 to 2 million people, folks, a population of 8 million. Uh, actually, we're protesting this weekend about this new thing that's going on with extradition in China. Don't know exactly what it is, but it's very, very, uh, very, very important over there to those folks. The problem is, you know, China, you know, they can shut this thing down anytime they want. I don't think they will because that's their conduit to the world, but um, it's really a big deal. I don't know what that's going to mean. We're going to look at this DAX chart. As you can see here, and then right after that, uh, we'll take a quick look at the FTSE, and then we want to move into that Hang Seng because um, th this could be really important uh, technically. Now, uh, I don't know much about the fundamentals, don't care about that, doesn't make any difference to me, but we'll look at it technically just to take a look. But as you can see from the DAX chart here, we have three lower tops since the uh, 11th of June when we made the uh, three drive to a top pattern up there with ABCD structure. And now, you know, we've been going lower highs here over the last few days. Now, whether we come out of this either way, you know, really uh, makes no makes no difference because uh, right now we're setting, we need to get a little bit lower for the 61% retracement to hit. And then we'll know if that holds and we got a chance for that ABCD structure uh, to really take a look at. Now, if we look at the FTSE, this is really interesting one because we have a very similar uh, situation with the lower highs, but as you can see, the symmetry on this, when you're going to see this is a 60-minute chart, so when you see these 26 bars up here, that means there's 26 hours, so that's a little more than one day. Uh, you'll see that they've come in together. That's basically the 135 pattern that we've talked about many times in here, so this is a bearish pattern saying we should start down uh, in the FTSE. Now, whether that's going to happen or not, I don't know. All I do know is that it fits nicely. The risk control here is, uh, you know, relatively small uh, from that standpoint. So let's keep an eye on that. But let's take a quick look now uh, at the Hang Seng Index just to sh see where we are. Now, this is a really interesting chart because, as you know, we uh, we watch this. We do not trade this. And the reason why they take breaks over there for two or three hours for tea and lunch and crumpets, whatever else they have, but it, they leave gaps on these charts uh, in, even during the day. But you'll notice the 61% retracement that we made down here in May. Then on uh, June the 3rd, we came in and uh, hit that last little one uh, right at the exact 61%. 61% retracement, had a strong rally, and then we've come down and retested. Now, it's very important that we stay above 26,600. The last price I had was 27,118. I didn't know what happened today, but um, 
we will uh, we'll keep an eye on that a little bit later. But this is very important that we don't go below that low because if we we do, that tells us that uh, we didn't have much of a rally coming off of that 61% retracement. And the fact that the first time we've come down, came down much too much too quickly. But that happens in markets, and that's nothing else you can do about it. Another one that you need to keep a close eye on, it's one of these ETFs that I don't particularly uh, take, take a look at. This just get up there and take a look at this thing. Uh, okay, it's up a little bit. Thank you very much, Steve. Steve. You've just told me that the Hang Seng did close higher, about 100 points, 27,227. So that's another one that we want to watch. But this ETF for the emerging markets has done pretty much the same thing that the Hang Seng has done. Remember, we've gone higher in a lot of these markets around the world, but we have not done it in the in the emerging markets. So we really don't know, you know, what's going to uh, to happen with that. Uh, another thing that we need to chat about today is the fact that what's going on in this corn market and grains and stuff because, folks, we got a real problem out here. It doesn't make any difference about tariffs with China. We might not have anything to sell to them. Now, wheat's doing, uh, you know, wheat has got, we got a little more wheat than we probably could, and maybe soybeans are going to be okay. But, boy, the corn market, folks, is in really, really bad trouble. I've got a very, very dear friend down there in Vincennes, Indiana, about uh, 45 miles south of Terre Haute, right there on the Wabash River, and uh, he's got a very, very large farm that's been in the farm in the family for about 140 years, I believe. And uh, uh, they're, they they really have problems. They're not they don't they don't even have 15 percent of their corn in, and uh, they're talking about 166 overall for 166 uh, bushels per acre in corn. That's down a lot. And he said he'll be lucky if he gets 20 bushels an acre. So uh, it's it's really very, very strange out there for people. And those farmers that have not used the services of, uh, you know, something like what Sime only does for protection against these things can really get into a great deal of trouble. Because if they've contracted corn, you know, to sell at $4 a bushel and corn selling at 475 like it is this morning in the December, I don't know where it is right now, but if it gets up to that level, it's going to be, uh, you know, really, really, uh, really, really tough. So uh, that's uh, that's why it's very interesting. I'll tell you, I have to give my hat off to Sime only because, uh, you know, as, as you remember, I was trying to buy the corn at 420. You know, I got to, to uh, 424 the day of the report. And I was chatting with Cy, and he said, Larry, he said, I don't care what that report says. I have to be long corn. And so he, uh, he, did, uh, he did pretty well. I will, I will mention this. When corn was down about 365 in that December corn, uh, he was actually buying some options, $4 options, folks. I think he paid 25, what did he pay? Uh, under a dollar. I think it was 25 or 50 cents that he paid for $4 options that are now trading uh, for well over $3,000. I think he bought more than three, but I'm not sure. Um, another one that we that looks really interesting here, and I'm going to spend more time with it when we come back from the break, is the Treasury note and Treasury bond market, because uh, it's <laughs> it's got me in a quandary. 877-927-6648. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien have just announced a special webinar on June 19th for all subscribers to the Taz Profile Scanner. Steve and Tom will break down the trade matrix, market breadth, heat grid, as well as the three-step process you can use with the Taz Profile Scanner to identify market movers and how to capitalize on that move. For all the details and to get started with the Taz Profile Scanner today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. With a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. Go sign up today. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, we're back, and I believe we have uh, Mr. Z from the Tiger Herd Den on the air. John, are you there? I am, Larry. So, well, well I will I hope thank you, you have in advance. I'm sorry, I sir. Ha I just wanted to wish you a happy Father's Day belatedly, John. Go ahead. And uh, and you and all other uh, listening fathers as well. Um, I wanted to first thank you in advance for doing Basil's show today and tomorrow. Um, we'll encourage uh, anybody and everybody to call into your show and uh, have a discussion so it's not a uh, monologue. But... Um, <laughs> Um, I wanted to ask and uh, ask you about corn, discuss it a bit. Uh, first, however, I wanted to ask this. You, uh, you went over the Hang Seng, FTSE, and DAX. And uh, in, uh, in keeping with stock indices, first I'll just observe that the September E-mini S&P contract last night's made a high up at 2905 a little bit lower now it's you know it's very quiet actually but my question is in your opinion and as you are guessing and we're just guessing of course was that 2905 high last night in the sep e mini was that a uh, a top occurring right on the full moon which occurred early this morning i believe so john the reason why I'm saying that is, is that uh, you know it should have been a lot stronger if it had if it had gone through there. We've been trading 29.10, something like that. Yes, I would think so. But my assumption is that it uh, is starting to roll over a bit. I'm still looking at the the June S&P, and as you know, we've been hugging that 78% uh, level for quite some time, and uh, I really believe that's that's around that 29 uh, 29.05 level. And I believe that that's going to hold a little bit. But, you know, longer term, you know, this thing could, uh, I mean, longer term, in the next couple of weeks, you know, I, I would be really like to buy a 50-point correction. Remember, we went from 27.30 to 29.06 without a heartbeat. I mean, it just went straight up. It, you know, just tore the shorts uh, right after we hit that 382 retracement at 2730, the ABCD pattern at 2730. I mean, uh, you know, it was, uh, you know, pretty apparent that there was probably something happening there. 
And, uh, you know, to have that big of a move, 100 and what, 180 handles in a matter of, uh, you know, what, uh, six days? I mean, that's telling us a lot of strength in that market. So I'm short, but I'd, I'd be willing to, you know, to just get a small profit on this if it does work because uh, this this doesn't look bearish right now in the stock market. Uh, you know, longer term, I'm very, very bearish. But right now, as long as it's acting like it is, you know, it looks pretty good. Now, my if we if we were to drop 40 or 50 handles here uh, today, then I'd have to reassess it. But frankly, it doesn't look like it wants to break that much. It doesn't make any difference what the news is, you know, fighting in Iran or whatever it is, or Hong Kong problems, uh, you know, the British, uh, the UK elections, whatever it's or whatever the prime minister is. I mean, all that stuff is uh, is factored into this, and you know, it doesn't want to go down. Uh, Larry, and in keeping with what you've just said, I just share something you had made a point of, and I uh, I reshare it because I often forget relevant stuff. But uh, you had uh, shared in the past 30 days how your Bradley model, the cycle turns, mm -hmm. uh, when you uh, shifted the Bradley model by I think it was six trading days, was lining up very nicely. Mm -hmm. which, in fact, was uh, targeting a turning point uh, the week of June 3rd, and bullseye, you got one. And as I, uh, looking at the chart that you've posted in the past 30, 45 days, that doesn't have another cycle turn, mm -hmm. uh, I think, until, you know, mid to late August. Uh, August, and August 25th, the anniversary date of the high that we made in 1987. Right, and then and then and then also it seems to dovetail with another thing that you showed a couple of times that I'm reminding myself of right now, and that was a uh, a cycle. I don't know how it was derived, but it came from Larry Williams, mm -hmm. and that also called for a low in June and no decisive turning point top until late July. So uh, if those cycles, however they were determined, are having any effects, the message would be don't be surprised if the market holds up, hangs up, moves higher, something like that, mm -hmm. at least through June into early July. So uh, so I reshare that for what it's worth. So. Yep, I, I agree. As long as we, uh, as long as we stay uh, below that uh, 2905 and the uh, June S&P futures, then I think that, you know, we could have a correction. Just 61% retracement would take you down quite a bit. So uh, this is just a nice 78% retracement. But, John, we're seeing some pretty significant divergence between the banking index and also the New York Stock Exchange index and also the uh, the uh, Russell 2000. All of those are much weaker. Even the NASDAQ is much weaker. So it's only about 50 or 60 stocks between, you know, the S&P, the Dow Jones, and the NASDAQ that are keeping this market up. And as Tom O'Brien mentioned on his show this morning, the, the volume on Friday was really, really, it was like everybody was asleep. But, uh, you know, this, this all could change, of course, but that's what we're looking at here coming in on uh, Monday morning. I, I did mention, I spoke to Arch Crawford about the uh, conflict with Iran, you know, with this thing. Was that the war thing he was looking at? And he said, no, he said, it has to be something a lot bigger than that. So I don't know if it didn't happen this time or not, but it, that uh, that shooting did go on within two days where he thought something was going to happen, but he didn't think that was big enough to make a uh, a difference. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I, uh, I was uh, thinking about that myself and, and mm -hmm. thinking the, the combination of all those things, Hong Kong, Mm -hmm. The uh, Gulf of Oman, Britain, whatever, it's, uh, you know, put all those together and collectively that seems like a pretty big deal to me. Uh, mm -hmm. But just uh, back on that, uh, the uh, E-mini the e S&P, uh, regardless of what those cycle studies might oh. indicate, um, I, you have trained me well. Uh, and it's manifest uh, here and now in this idea that so long as that June E-mini S&P doesn't get over that 2911, that exact to the point FIB 786 test, I respect that as being a, uh, a high of consequence. And of course, we get over that, and that changes the game. But 
until then, that's uh, that's the thought I'm sticking with. I have to agree with that 100 percent. So, uh, Larry, let's let's get on the corn. I wanted to ask you oh, this. Hey, John, um, let, what we're going to have to do is we have to pay a few bills here pretty soon, but uh, let's start, and then we want to come on and spend some time with the corn and and also wheat, too, because wheat's very interesting up in here. So uh, I believe what we'll have to do is we've got a probably musical introduction coming here pretty quickly to tell us that we got to pay a few bills, and then when we get back from that, let's start with corn, and then we'll look at the wheat market. And then we'll also take a quick look at the soybeans. And if anybody has any questions, give us a call, 877-927-6648. We're on with Mr. Z from the Tiger Den. We'll be right back, folks. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and we're talking with uh, Mr. Z out of the den here at Tiger Financial News Network about uh, the corn market. We're switching over to that. John, I posted the long-term weekly chart of corn and as you can see, we're about 12 cents away from the 78% retracement of the high made a couple of years ago. And it looks like with the move up today, we could be there sometime this morning. What's your feeling here on the corn? Uh, yes, indeed, Larry. Thank you for that. Uh, just to supplement what you've just shown, in the Tiger's Den, I have posted the monthly corn chart going back 20 years. 
-hmm. So one can see higher levels and Fibonacci resistance targets and levels uh, just to uh, get a big pick, uh, a big uh, bird's eye view of it. Um, and I would, before I uh, share just some thoughts about the corn price, I will look forward to what you have to, to show on the uh, wheat futures, the ZW contract, and potential uh, targets that we can look to for turning point candidates. But um, on the corn, Larry, uh, first I had to ask, when you've spoken to Simonly, uh, since uh, Sylvius had its, its roots in the state of Indiana, um, and since Ohio, Indiana, and Southern Illinois is in the heart of the worst hit Corn Belt uh, uh, rain-wise, uh, how many of, of the, uh, oh, not how many, when you speak to him, to what extent is he telling you he is in fear of a great number of his customers or people he knows of going bankrupt because, uh, because they'll have no crop to sell, or potentially worse, they forward hedged the 2019 crop mm -hmm. with the Dease futures and now won't have any corn to deliver against that. What is he telling you, please? Well, what they do, John, you know, his whole program is based on risk control. And when, uh, when, when corn went above $4 uh, a bushel you know, a month ago, uh, that was telling the farmers there's a problem somewhere. You know that's where their that's where their profit margin lied, right at four dollars. That's where they did all their hedging. Now once it goes above four dollars, you know they start to uh, they have to start to lose money. They have crop insurance against this to some extent, but those that didn't have crop insurance, what they have to do is they have to go into the futures market to cover that forward hedge. Otherwise, they're exposing the whole the whole value of their land to a big problem. He said there are a few farmers. You know, with uh, thousands and thousands of acres that take that risk all the time, but you know they uh, they actually do that kind of stuff. So uh, you know, they there are a few, but those people are very well healed, and uh, they know the risks that they're dealing in. And he said it. He's been doing this for I think 25 years when Rich Anderson first got him into the business, and he hasn't had any of them, you know, go tapioca yet. But this could be the type of situation that if it doesn't improve, could be one of those years where some of these folks run into really, really serious problems, you know, with their uh, with their crops. And, you know, John, I, I want to bring this to your attention because Cy brought it to my attention, and so for my pay grade to understand it, but it's a simple chart just to look at it. Let me just get this up here to just show you how far behind uh, they are with the, uh, with the crop this year uh, with corn. Like I mentioned, my good friend Dougie down in Vincennes, Indiana, he's got uh, a lot of acres. And he's only got about 10% uh, planted, and the rest of it, you know, it's not going to have anything. So you can see here, as of June the 10th, just a, you know, just a few days ago, last week, you know, we're we're only got uh, just a few million acres. You see what I mean? Left to plant? Can you can you imagine where we were? Look where we were in 2011 when corn went to seven bucks. You know, this comes from uh, price projections by Bill Gary, that a lot of people use that have been around forever. Bill's been. Uh, one of the best guys for fundamentals in the business, but you can see they're way behind, and it's just not getting any better. The weather's just not improving. Yeah, and I'll just, uh, to that point, as I mentioned, uh, a swath in the eastern Corn Belt, most, uh, basically all of Ohio, most of Indiana down into southern Illinois, and that is just, the, I mean, there's just millions and millions of corn acres there. And um, it has been incredibly wet, and unfortunately, the Monday through Friday forecast uh, from the uh, National Weather Service is for another one to four inches across that whole region. So uh, what's already bad in terms of waterlogged soils, either mm -hmm. unplanted acreage or planted acreage that's now drowning, uh, mm -hmm. will be will get worse in that area. Uh, now, of course, that's not the same as out in Nebraska, but this area is big. Uh, I'll share this with you, Larry. I, 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 I share this with you publicly because I find it helpful just to remind myself because I often forget. Uh, here we are 
uh, in in the corn market dealing with you know the the expectation or the hope coming into this year that 90 million acres would be planted and they're not going to get that many in and then what the yield per acre is coming out of course is is uh, uncertain uh, so with this set of parameters I remind myself this when I am trading the Dees corn futures I am not I repeat I am not trading corn what I'm trading is the market guesses of what the corn crop size will be <laughs> that we won't actually know the answer to yeah. until December so we're so all we're, we're not trading the you know the physical stuff we're trading guesses mm -hmm. and um, what I'll uh, what I also remind myself about is this when we get to the point where a key metric that people in the trade look at and that is a stocks to use ratio and that is you grow the crop you put it in the bin it's an inventory then you uh, you uh, consume off that pile of stuff for the next 12 months well um, when uh, stocks are ample and the crops were big prices low when the uh, production slips and stocks to use falls say falls under um, uh, or ending stocks pardon me ending stocks to use falls you get to a point where price where inventory or ending stocks to use declines on account of a smaller crop you get to a point where as that declines price rises but not linearly not in a straight line but goes exponential so mm -hmm. we're dealing with guesses of the future crop and the guesses are coming way down you mentioned that idea 166 bushels per acre was the guess for yield per acre and 3 million acres unplanted well as those guesses come lower like not 3 million acres prevented from planting but 5 or 10 and the yield guesses go lower you get to the point where that translates in oh john we got to take a break stay with us we'll be right back okay sure we'll talk with mr z from tiger financial news about the grain markets particularly corn where we go to wheat after that If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South 
African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Okay, folks, we're talking with Mr. Z. Uh, John, let's take a quick look at this uh, wheat market. As you can see, it's been a lot weaker on a relative basis compared to the corn, but we're up here against some really strong 61% uh, resistance up in here. And uh, Sim only told me Sunday when I chatted with him that uh, they were already starting to sell Minneapolis wheat uh, on uh, Friday, uh, that that looked uh, a lot weaker. So uh, any feeling on the wheat market here? Larry, uh, I'm glad you posted that. Uh, what's the number? 543 is yes. your 618. 544 uh, was a 618. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. This, um, Larry, the um, the wheat, the Chicago wheat contract, of course, is it is following corn higher. The supply demand balance situation in wheat is is less bullish than corn. And as a speculator, uh, I'm right with you in saying, hey, if I want a top pick, I want to go after this uh, Chicago wheat contract first. Because if we do get a turn in corn, uh, you'll get a turn in wheat, and wheat will likely fall harder, would be my guess. Uh, so uh, I'm glad you shorted wheat, Larry, at 544. I missed it myself. It's a little bit lower now. Well, that doesn't mean very much, uh, John. Uh, <laughs> tell me uh, what's your what's your feeling on the soybeans here? Yeah, let me, uh, Larry. I, I'm sorry. Let me go back to corn and just make the point that uh, I had not uh, gotten to in that last segment. We're at a point right here where the market buyers and sellers are guessing the uh, this year's crop size, and of course that's a moving target, and we don't know. What I want to share with you, this concept, and I remind myself of this daily, as conditions are worsening and not improving, uh, if, we get, if we go from a crop size guess that we have today, and if we go just, oh, 100 million bushels smaller, if that's the guess in a couple of days' time, we're at a point where the calculated ending stocks to use figures are to the point where that decline in gas will generate or just Sorry, folks. I think we've lost. Uh, I don't know if you folks can hear me or not, but I think we caught. Uh, we must have some. Uh, ah, good. 
I think we lost. Uh, <laughs> they probably have, Bart, but they haven't told me yet. No, I think we lost John. I don't know uh, why, but uh, thank goodness he tells us about some of these things because they're very, very important. But uh, you got to be really careful up here in these grains, folks, because of the fact that the whole world is bullish, uh, you know, uh, on these things. And that's usually when, when things change. I can remember in, uh, in 1970. Six. Uh, the, the crop was so bad that they said the only soybeans were going to be in the uh, Smithsonian Institute, and uh, they went down the limit five days a row following that report. So, um, you know, it's it's really you got to be really careful. But corn is really a big problem, folks, because if they uh, they can they can move that quite a bit. And believe me, these tariffs have nothing to do with it because China is going to have to buy from somebody. And uh, you know they, they they South America can't feed all of China, so they've got to come to us if they're if they're going to need it. And some of that stuff that's going on with these games that they play is far far beyond this old cowboy's pay grade. So I don't worry about it too much. Let's talk just a little bit about the Treasury markets, folks. Uh, I have probably gotten more information. Let's put it this way on this Treasury note and Treasury bond trade that we put on than just about anything I've done here for TFNN in the last uh, 12 years. And I've had quite a few of them, of course, but uh, this is one that is really interesting. Let's just take a look at this Treasury note. I'm going to give you my two cents worth here because uh, Tudor Jones uh, came on the air, or Bloomberg, I guess, and said that uh, you know he was looking for zero interest rates in the Treasury notes because we were going to go into a severe recession, and that was going to be uh, the... the format for doing it but let's look at the uh, look at the divergence here that we have in the treasury notes right now you can see the the blue line this is the TLT which is the ETF for the treasury notes you can see the treasury notes went into new high ground exactly again at the 61% retracement in the uh, June bond uh, excuse me the September bonds at uh, treasury notes at 12721 the previous high was 12720 you notice we did not make a new high in the TLT go back to where you were in August if you'll notice down there where the uh, TLT did not make a new high in August, but you see the blue line, the jagged line there, that's the that's the Treasury notes, the actual largest of all the futures contracts traded, open interest of more than $3 million. and it did make a higher high by, by substantial amount, and they didn't do it in the, in the ETF, so whether that means anything or not, I'm not sure, but even more important than all of that is that when markets get near highs and lows, I always watch for what's going on with the open interest, and for the last two weeks, we have not seen big increases in open interest in Treasury notes. Just on the other hand, we've seen decreases. So that means players are leaving the market, folks. Let me explain to you what that means. You own a you own a leather shop, okay, and you don't have any leather to sell. You're out of business. So no matter how many people come into that shop, you don't have anything to sell them. So there's got to be people that are going to have to come into that leather shop to buy things and bring their own leather because if there's no products, this thing's going to go the other way. The whole world, well, not the whole world, but a lot of the big boys, you know, uh, Stanley Drucker Miller and, and, and Paul Tudor Jones, you know, those are the ones that, uh, you know, make you uh, want to realize that that's what's going on. I haven't done anything on the gold yet. I will, Tucker, coming back from the break. Uh, I do want to cover that. But the tre Treasury notes and Treasury bonds are very important in here when you got big hitters saying it's going to go to zero. That makes ec no economic sense to me. These guys are a whole lot smarter than me, folks. But just uh, <laughs> my own grandpa, man, he, he never went past the fifth grade, but he was one smart son of a gun. I tell you one thing, he would never give his money to somebody and that person charge him for holding it. That's not going to happen. He'd keep it in his mattress. But anyway, let's uh, we'll switch over here to the gold market. Uh, gold, there's one really interesting chart here that we should bring up. This is from Stock Charts, and I want to bring this up so you can take a look at it. It's a really good uh, idea what happened in gold. You had that big move up. Uh, I covered this in the newsletter extensively because of the platinum and silver relationships. But you notice that shooting star pattern that was there. That's a pretty important one, you know, to look at it. And we, we broke down. Pretty good. We rallied back ten dollars today. Uh, the thirty-eight percent retracement on that move comes in at thirteen forty-seven. If it's bearish, it's not going to get much above thirteen forty-seven. If it gets above thirteen fifty, you know we could be looking at new highs again Monday or Tuesday. But frankly, the the charts on platinum and the charts on silver are they're not very 
conducive to thinking precious metals are going to go anywhere. 877-927-6648. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability. And for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today if you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and I posted a chart from uh, Stock Charts from an investment company showing this uh, thing with the goal, but I wanted to the second one that I posted is from uh, Jim Flanagan of GAN Educators over in Santa Monica, Santa Monica California, one of the premier, uh, uh, the premier GAN guy that I know. And he's basically showing the chart of home stake mining. It really shows the high of the stock market, September 3rd, 1929. You can see the, the stock sold off and then it went. You can see the percentage, what happened to the gold market at that time. Folks, this... This is one of the things that Tudor Jones thinks could possibly happen this year in the gold market, that if interest rates go to zero, the, the move to physical assets will come back and gold will re review its preeminence. Now, I don't know if that's going to happen or not, but uh, you know that might be a theory that goes on. I don't understand negative interest rates, and I don't pretend to, but uh, all I can say is that uh, I'm just looking at the charts. But anyway, that's what we're watching here. Uh, in this gold market uh, to see what the next pullback is going to be. I'd love to be able to see it 
Um, we'll be able to see here what's going on here. Um, John, you did a great job with the corn. Believe me, you did it. You did a wonderful job. We got cut off once, but uh, uh, you, you know, it's great information, and the people certainly appreciate it. So don't don't give up just because we lost a little bit of uh, uh, downtime because of dead time from the the phone going out. But uh, all that stuff you talk about is very good, and uh, you know you got to be uh, prepared to. To see what's going on now. We hit some pretty st stiff resistance there in Christmas corn at uh, 472 today, and uh, we're down just to 468 right now. Wheat's down about a, oh, a dime from the high, but uh, I don't believe negative interest rates. You know, that makes no no sense to me. I, I don't even know, but you can see what happened to home stake mining. You know, it went uh, went ballistic, and you know, that could happen to gold. And I will, I do believe if we get above 1375 in gold, uh, you certainly want to be long some gold, and believe me, silver's going to be pulled up, too, if it gets above that also. The key to watching is the platinum this week because we've got a chance for a really long-term weekly test down at the uh, 978, I believe. So keep an eye on the platinum. We'll be right back, and I'll see you folks in the flip side at noon. I'll be covering for Basil Chapman. Not an easy task, folks. <laughs> 